ABC News. The news starts now. AM 1240 and 95.3 FM. WJON. WJON News Time, 1232 and 81 degrees. I'm Lee Voss. News being brought to you by Rejuve Medical. We'll have a look at your WJON forecast coming up in just a few moments. 46 National Guard soldiers have been deployed to flood-stricken Waterville in south-central Minnesota. Major General Sean Mankey says the soldiers are trained and prepared to deploy on short order. He says the National Guard can provide essential resources such as high water vehicles, helicopter support and engineering assets to help respond to these flood emergencies. Main key says the Guard unit will remain in Waterville 24-7 until relieved of their duties. The DNR says flooding continues to affect several state parks in Minnesota. Gooseberry Falls, Tedagooch, and Temperance River state parks in northeastern Minnesota have significant damage and flooded trails. DNR officials say Savannah Portage, Wild River, Afton, Miniopa, Whitewater, and Carly state parks also have damaged and muddy trails. Fort Snelling State Park remains closed due to high water. Tours at the Forestville Mystery Cave State Park are suspended, but floodwaters are starting to recede there. The Minnesota Department of Health wants those who use private wells for drinking water to take steps to prevent contamination due to flooding. The agency issued a news release urging property owners to have a private well contractor do a checkup. They also suggested flood proofing for wells that need repairs, including extending the well casing above the expected flooding. Those who can't get their wells checked should get a supply of clean water that will last several days. The Department of Health also suggests shutting off power to the well to prevent flood water from being pumped into the plumbing system. The St. Cloud Technical and Community College is starting a new program to help address the shortage of aviation mechanics. President Lori Clue says they plan to start the new program by the fall of 2026 at the St. Cloud Regional Airport. So we're looking at what would we build, like an, a hangar. We're working with St. Cloud Regional Airport on that. So we would have a space out there. They'd have their own hangar for training. Uh, part of being FAA certified, we have to have their user curriculum, well, not their curriculum, but we have to follow their curriculum requirements. We have to have certain space requirements and certain equipment requirements. Clue says they've hired someone to help launch the program who will be starting in July. They'll also need to get accreditation from the Higher Learning Commission and approval from the Federal Aviation Administration. The industry anticipates up to 300 aviation mechanic openings per year in the coming years. There is a three-year waiting list to get into other similar programs at other community colleges in Minnesota. Authorities here in Minnesota are urging riders to safely operate their ATVs in response to an increase in crashes and fatalities. Morrison County Sheriff Sean Larson says they've had five ATV injury incidents and two deaths since late March. We're taking a serious look at things, trying to do a little bit more education, if you will, reminding people, make sure that you're exercising caution, staying alert, avoiding distraction, and not driving uh, under the influence and following the speed limit and traffic laws. Sheriff Larson recommends adults take the online ATV safety course and riders under the age of 16 complete the in-person class. All riders and passengers under 18 must wear DOT-certified helmets. Minnesota farmers are pushing Congress to put more regulations in the pending renewal of the farm bill to curb what they call the abuses of corporate factory farms. Organizer Matthew Sheets with the Minnesota-based Land Stewardship Project says they want to restore competition in livestock markets and level the playing field for independent producers. Minnesota is fortunate that we have pretty robust local control laws, which means that counties and even townships have the final say on whether or not a large factory farm is actually built. Sheets says Congress should reduce the level of subsidies for large-scale factory farm operations through con conservation programs that should instead support smaller independent farms. WJON News Time, it's 1235 and 81 degrees. News being brought to you by Rejuve Medical. Stay tuned for a look at your WJON forecast next. For St. Cloud and Fairhaven, it's going to be a warm one. 87 degrees, increasing clouds today, 
and winds out of the southeast at 8 to 15. Now, there is a chance for some scattered thunderstorm activity early. Again, we mentioned that there's the potential for some severe weather. Damaging winds, large hail would be the primary threats if storms do develop tonight. Then 65 degrees under clearing skies late. Tomorrow, plenty of sunshine up to 84. Sunny on Wednesday, high of 76. Thursday, approaching 80 with a chance for some scattered storms, but better chance coming our way Thursday night and into Friday, where we'll see a high of 81. And then for the weekend, chance for rain on Saturday, otherwise a mix of clouds and sun, 73. And then on Sunday, sunny and 74. Again, right now it's 81 degrees. For more St. Cloud area news, sports, and weather, use the free WJON mobile app. I'm Lee Voss, WJON. Sounds good. Thank you, Lee. More news, of course, on the radio throughout the afternoon. My full conversation about the Cornhole State Championships coming to town this weekend. We'll have that uh, conversation on the way.